Coffee has been grown here on the Big Island of Hawaii since the early 1800s. The rich soil and climate conditions help make Kona coffee some of the best in the world. And for one farming family, the crop means a new approach in bringing the beans to the brew. The shores of Hawaii's Big Island would seem a perfect place for retirement. That's what orthopedic surgeon Dr. Joe Alban and his artist wife Deepa had in mind when they purchased 22 acres on the Big Island back in 1997. That is, until they planted a few coffee trees on the property and began sharing some of their crop. And then we started giving us Christmas gifts to family and friends and next thing you know, everybody was just loving it. And from there it just grew. It turns out, Joe and Deepa's land sits on a swath of oceanfront soil known as the Gold Belt of the Kona Coffee District, one of the richest coffee growing regions in the world. Looking to improve the quantity and quality of their harvest, Joe and Deepa conceived of a process where coffee trees are trained to climb and spread along trellises, just like grapevines. The reason we trellis is not just for uh, better coffee production, University of Hawaii has done research on our farm and it produces 35% more coffee when you trellis. Felipe Mamed is from Brazil. He's one among a group of college interns studying the way the Albans produce coffee at Kona Joe, the company that sprouted from the Albans retirement property. We teach two main stems to grow along a wire, just like a wine grape mm -hmm. tree. And for those main stems, new branches will grow vertically and those new branches will become new stems. Felipe says this new agricultural approach, along with Hawaii's year-round growing season, means that each tree can produce multiple harvests. You have some fruits that came from flowers that bloomed in early February, okay? And we still have some very young coffee flowers that still will be blooming. When fully ripened, fruit on the trees produce red cherries containing the actual beans. Only this kind of cherry will become a good cup, okay? So, we start processing it by squeezing it, and inside the cherries, we have two seeds or two beans. Most cherries contain two beans. That means someone has to hand pick 2,000 cherries just to get one pound of premium coffee. Growing coffee on vines is not the only thing unique about the Alban farm. That's because Kona Joe takes a different approach in the wet and dry milling process. Everybody uses this cold water, and we use actually hot water for process that breaks the sugars down faster and makes the coffee even more sweet. Once the husks have been removed, the beans are sorted by size and grated. Bagged for storage, the varieties include pea berry, extra fancy, and prime. The bags are then moved into cold storage rooms with low humidity to reduce the chance of mold. So a lot of times when you drink coffee, your stomach burns or you need cream and sugar because the acidity levels are so high, the, mold, uh, the more mold you have on the coffee beans, the higher the acidity is. Oh, I had no idea. But if you store coffee this way, it keeps the temperature at all times the same. The Albans only roast their coffee when orders are placed and only 25 pounds at a time. And since the boutique brand is made exclusively from beans on the family farm, Kona Joe can claim the title of estate coffee. In the Kona Joe gift shop, guests have a chance to sample the harvest. It's very smooth. I like it very much. Very, I don't like a nice bitter coffee, coffee and yeah. this is a smooth coffee. Joe Alban's medical practice keeps him in California half of every month. Deepa misses him but admits there is plenty to keep her busy on their retirement property. It's hard life being farmers. I was supposed to have a nice house on that pad right there and just have a nice easy life, but somehow we chose to be farmers. And it's just been a great success. It's been one of the best things I've ever done.